Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we make informed decisions about our financial future. This is our Forex Technical Analysis video update. Before we begin our video, we always like to start off our disclosures. Any symbols that you see today should not be inferred as a trader recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, option, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can lose all of your money. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. As we said, this is our Forex Technical Analysis video update. In each of our videos, we will review the prior system's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll look at the crude and gold charts to come up with leading sentiment. We'll come up with a low volatility watch list, an inside bar watch list, and we'll have an economic uh, calendar update to see what could affect our future and open trades. And finally, if there's time, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. Let's pull up the charts. Okay, so we had yet another day of uh, extreme sell-offs and a yet another day of flight to safety to gold. We broke 1800 again, and not only did we break it, we closed above it. We closed above our last swing high here. Yesterday, we said, uh, I'm not sure why the lines went away, but we said, you know, if we break above uh, here, that you have a trade. Uh, and we based that up off of the hourly, and we said if we get above this area, uh, what did we say yesterday? Yesterday, we said if you, if you get above here, which is around 1795, that you would definitely test the 1800 levels or higher, the last swing high here on a daily, the wick high here. And that's exactly what happened uh, today. So, you know, more bad news across the board. Europe, the States, doesn't make a difference. Bad news. And so, again, we have the flight to safety to gold. And as we said, it's all about your risk tolerance. Uh, it's high, but there's not to say gold can't go higher. There's not to say that gold will go higher. So it doesn't really make a difference. Um, you can see uh, we've shot up here, especially in the uh, the midday here. And um, uh, now we're consolidating a little bit, a little breathing. But you can see it's closing at the highs. So definitely some strength here in gold. And you can see that we're certainly overbought. So with gold being strong, what does that mean to our dollar currency pairs? Well, on the daily, we put in uh, sort of a hammer, sort of a hammer. Buyers came in and brought us back up. Uh, we still, uh, also an inside bar, we're still inside of yesterday's trading range. But what's important is that we stayed above this consolidation range. We stayed above that. But we're still below the wick high from uh, the end of May. We're still below that, but we're above this action in here. Now, what we drew yesterday was this lovely uptrend line on a one-hour time frame, and you can see, had you bought it, you would be doing fine. A little heat there, but uh, uh, you can see you would be doing fine had you bought it. Why is that, or why are we pulling off, pulling back a little bit? You can see that the the dollar did take control, which brought us back down to our trend line, but then the pound surged a little bit, uh, and that's why we got a little move up. So the dollar is in control, but the pound is is above zero also, and we can see you know the trend up is still going for the pound. We should see if we can get a bounce here off the moving average like we did here. And we can see that we're trending down here on the dollar. It will be interesting to see if we get uh, any type of pullback to the moving average. So overall, uh, we have an inside day on the daily. So you want to mark the high and the lows and see which way we break. If we break below this wick, then we're back in this overall range and you know uh, back to consolidation. If we break higher, then we can retest the May highs and see what happens. Now the euro dollar is a little bit weaker. Here you can see uh, the resistance of our downward line basically held and now we're back down with a little support of the 20 and 50 moving average. However, the 20 and 50 moving average is moving sideways, which is a great testament to the sideways consolidation action of the euro dollar. Here we drew this channel and said, you know, until we break out of this channel, you know, stay out of the trade. Well, we broke below it. You would have done fine if you traded. Now we came back up here and tested it, and we're failing again. So it would be interesting to see if we, we continue to move down um, 
off of new, the long-term moving average, off of neutral, and get into some buying zone. We can see clearly that the um, dollar is in control. We got that divergence, which is what brought us down, got us out of this channel that we were mentioning. And we can see the fall off here um, on the individual currency pair. So as long as the dollar is in control, we'll see this move down, maybe test some of the, the wicks area down here at 1.41, or even our, our extreme low down here at 1.4. But in the end, you can see that our, our zone, once we broke it, now became resistance, and now we're moving back lower. Now, we also have a zone here on our dollar franc. Uh, we've put in three days, four days here, basically one inside of the other, a lot of inside bars here. So you're going to want to watch that. And a better way to illustrate that is here on a one hour where we drew these lines in for yesterday, and we said as long as we're in it, either trade or this resistance and the support or trade to break. We're still uh, above our long term moving average. We're still above neutral, but now we're in a, in a neutral zone. We're not in a sell zone, but we can see the dollar has taken control, but the franc is still strong. So look at our zones here on the dollar franc. Look at our zone here on our do euro dollar. Will it be resistance? And then on our pound dollar, look at our, our trend line and let's see. How the market reacts. As we come to our two watch lists, first, low volatility. This is our one hour time frame where we're watching Bollinger Band breakouts. We have the pound dollar, the dollar franc. And then for our inside bar watches, we have the pound yen, the pound dollar, the euro yen, and we have the dollar franc. On our inside of our watch list, we're watching the, the range, today's range. We talked about this with the pound dollar. And we're watching for a breakout above the high or above the low of today, preferably in the direction of the trend. So, as we move to our education spotlight, we're going to talk about experience. And the reason we talk about this is because we were talking about yesterday about the battle. And you have to understand that it is a battle. The market is its not out to get you, but the market is not there to make money for you either. And so the only way you're going to figure out what works and doesn't work is through experience. You need to get in there and, and uh, paper trade, virtual trade, and then even when you go live, you're going to find out that it's still a little bit different. And so the only way you're going to be able to truly uh, impact your, uh, your trading is to uh, trust your experience and trust your feel and trust your intuition and again the way we build that is through interacting with the market the way we do that is by paper trading you don't just throw money at it you gotta f test back test that system and make sure that it's work and you'll learn that your experience your you will learn to trust what you see by um, using the experience in the past back testing a system proving that, that it works so that you can have positive expectancy and then you will see that your experience will show you the right way and not following other person, not following other systems, but instead your experience will allow you to enact somebody else's system, somebody else's calls in the best way that fits you. There's nothing wrong with newsletters, there's nothing wrong with trading rooms, there's nothing wrong with gurus. What is wrong is not having the experience to discern, to tell when what they're saying works for you and when what they're saying does not. Because you have to trade it, it's your account, it's your money, and sometimes what's good for another person isn't good for you and only your experience will tell you that. You know you can find our videos on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We still have our wonderful free five video course uh, where you can get a gaze to our teaching style, our coaching style, and it will teach you how to develop your own high probability trading setups. All of that is to guide you through to our coaching 101, will help you gain that experience, how to formulate that experience, and more importantly, teach you how to have your own trader's mindset, your own discernment so that you can figure out what works best for you and for someone else. Cash back for your Forex trade. If you're going to trade Forex, why not get paid to trade? Uh, it doesn't trade your spreads and conditions. It's just rebates. And finally, signals. I'm always asked to give signals. Well, here's signals. It can be traded automatically, or you can uh, get the signals to trade it for yourself. And what's great about it is it is a bunch of providers, and you can find the, the signal provider that matches who you are so that you can use your experience to tell whether or not it's a good trade for you or not.
Because again, all these things are good. Systems, indicators, new letters, trading rooms. But your experience, your intuition, your feel will guide you to success. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.